The dominant natural feature of the Tongass National Forest is trees. This is, after all, America's largest national forest, but a surprisingly important part of the forest is less visible beneath the surface. These old pilings are just some of the above ground remains of a vast network of underground gold mines that established the towns of Juneau and Douglas in the late 1800s. Go to Prince of Wales Island and you'll find hundreds of caves. In other parts of the Tongass, remnants of old volcanoes are visible and current hot springs are still heated by the Earth's core. The complex geology of the Tongass has resulted in a wild array of features, including gold ore, but many of these features are hidden beneath the Tongass. This cave is the largest known cave in Alaska. It's one of the longest known caves in Alaska. El Capitan Cave on Prince of Wales Island has been opened to the public by the Forest Service, which manages caves on the Tongass National Forest. El Cap is just one of hundreds of caves already discovered. Jim Bachtel knows Alaska's caves. He's the geologist for the Tongass with responsibilities for Karsten Cave management. Bachtel is from Washington, and he grew up in the shadow of Mount St. Helens. Fascination with Alaska. I grew up listening to stories from my grandfather in the years that he spent up here, and I always wanted to come, and the opportunity came along, and I grabbed it. Once in Alaska, Bachtel grabbed onto the geologic history of Southeast Alaska. It's a history that shows the importance of Earth forces in creating surface features that are important today. And it's a history that began millions of years ago. We're at the end of the plate tectonic conveyor belt. Um, 10 to 11 pieces of continents which no longer exist came rafted in on plates. So these small fragments of continents have just been stacked up along our outer shores. Plate tectonics created the southeast Alaska we see today, but of course there have been other significant forces at play. The largest modification that's happened on the landscape over the last two million years is multiple glacial advances. So those boundaries between the terrains and the major fault lines as a result of how southeast was assembled is what the ice worked on to build our fjords and our straits and our channels. It's been suggested that magma moved up along those fractures right after the ice started to pull back in southeast Alaska, creating a series of volcanic eruptions, such as Mount Edgecombe and the Mount Edgecombe volcanic field. We also see other volcanic cones and events, such as New Eddystone Rock, which is the core of an old volcano. The same fracture systems that allowed the magma to come up to spread out volcanism throughout southeast Alaska probably is allowing groundwater to get down to depth to come up as these hot springs. Geology and mining have also played a pivotal role in the history of southeast Alaska and its economy. By the late 1800s, gold discoveries had attracted many. In Juneau, the Alaska Juneau gold mine prospered for over half a century before closing in the 1940s. Mining remains an important industry beneath the Tongass to this day. Mining operations on the Tongass continue to contribute to employment and to the economies of the state and many communities. For example, the Kennecott Greens Creek Mine is one of the largest silver producers in North America and the top producer of zinc from National Forest System lands. This underground mine is located on the northern end of Admiralty Island National Monument. It's unique in that it operates within a national monument, but on a very small footprint of just 320 acres. In addition to gold, silver, and zinc, other valuable minerals under the Tongass include platinum, molybdenum, copper, lead, uranium, iron, marble, and limestone. Southeast Alaska's complex geology includes large karst landscapes. They're formed in underground limestone deposits that have been dissolved by acidic water seeping through from the surface. There's two ways that water 
gets into the karst system. One by a major stream that flows directly into a cave entrance. And the second is through all the fractures that underlie the forest. And that's why the forest is what we refer to as well-drained. These well-drained karst areas are among the most productive in the Tongass. Trees grow larger and faster because the roots hold better in the rock fissures and because of the good drainage provided by fractured limestone. Acidic muskeg water that seeps through limestone caves emerges with a higher pH. This nutrient-rich and buffered water results in more algae in the streams for fish and large productive clam beds near beaches. Increasingly, the karst areas are recognized for their caves, particularly on Prince of Wales Island. We have inventoried only a small portion of southeast Alaska. We know of about 700 caves right now across the Tongass. We find 20 to 30 new caves a year. The Forest Service and experienced spelunkers have carefully explored and mapped Tongass caves. They have made discoveries that change fundamental understandings of early southeast Alaska. In 1990, when we first started seriously working in the caves, it was thought that, and reported and written in many places, that glacial ice covered all of southeast Alaska to the edge of the continental margin, 3,000 feet thick, and nothing existed here, and nothing lived here. Up the small side passage here, some 400 feet inside the cave are the claw marks of a bear in the mud of this passage. There's no way of knowing how long these claw marks have been here, but the stable environment inside the cave may have preserved them for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. We started realizing that there were places that animals survived through the last ice age. So if the animals could survive out there, that there were corridors out there that people could have moved through that were unglaciated. These discoveries challenged the theory that the only way for the first people to enter North America was over the Bering Land Bridge and through an interior corridor between melting ice sheets. The concept of coastal migration that was proposed long ago by Newt Fladmark was strengthened by the discoveries here in Southeast Alaska from inside the caves. The oldest artifact that we found inside the cave that is unquestionably of human origin is a flaking tool that's 10,300 years old. And then there were the human remains that was found on a cave here in northern Prince of Wales Island that dated to 9,700 years old. The discoveries already made in southeast Alaska caves have been significant. No one knows how many caves are yet to be found and what other surprises they may reveal. What's it look like from there? It's a steep, narrow pit that drops down about 20 feet from up here. We've now cataloged over 50,000 bones from 13 different caves across the Tongass that span way beyond the dating capability of carbon-14, which is 45,000 years and younger is its ability. And it's painted a completely different picture of life on the Tongass over the last 50,000 years. So whether it's caves, hot springs, volcanoes, or gold mines, there's a lot more to the Tongass than meets the eye. So when you're using your cell phone with its gold printed circuits, or you hear a new theory as to how the first people came to North America, remember, there's a connection with what's beneath the Tongass. For the Tongass National Forest, I'm Pete Griffin.